Most people know about chemical trails. This is just one tool in your government's arsenal of tricks. NASA even admits to it. They even admit using lithium. What else is NASA up to? Well, they are cutting their live ISS camera feed because too many weird things are showing up and they can no longer explain them with credibility. So NASA uses misinformation and disinformation, excessive information, and censorship just to name a few of their tricks. There are even rumors of mysterious and unexplained deaths of scientists and UFO researchers. If you don't believe me, start doing some research. Start taking photographs of the sun, or use a welder's mask, or some sort of infrared filtering device that will make this heavenly body more visible to the naked eye. It's there, folks. This is not a fabrication or a figment of someone's imagination. It exists. I have been studying and investigating the Planet X scenario for more than 15 years now. I have looked at numerous images and videos of this incoming system, and I have interviewed a host of experts and investigators who are knowledgeable on this controversial subject. I can bear witness to you of the impact this system has on our own planet and the atmospheric changes that are taking place as a result of this incoming system. I have both seen and felt its presence. It has already affected myself and others in my community in personal ways, as I explained in my last video. Conspiracies, cover-ups, deception, and false flags. Countries and governments have a long history of using these tools, and if you think you are safe or are no longer living in an age when this could happen, you have already succumbed to their false propaganda and are actually helping perpetuate the conspiracy surrounding Planet X. Many of you know who Matt Damon is an Oscar-winning actor who also happens to be an advocate for social and political injustice. Last year he spoke about the evilness of the world we live in. In some ways his speech is indicative of what many of us are struggling with today, trying to decipher between right and wrong, between what is real and what is not, between truth and deception. So let's listen in. I start from the supposition that the world is topsy-turvy, that things are all wrong, that the wrong people are in jail and the wrong people are out of jail, that the wrong people are in power and the wrong people are out of power, that the wealth is distributed in this country and the world in such a way as not simply to require a small reform, but to require a drastic reallocation of wealth. I start from the supposition that we don't have to say too much about this because all we have to do is think about the state of the world today and realize that things are all upside down. Now, if you don't think, if you just listen to TV and read scholarly things, you actually begin to think that things are not so bad or that just little things are wrong. But you have to get a little detached and then come back and look at the world, and you are horrified. So we have to start from that supposition that things are really topsy-turvy. And our topic is topsy-turvy, civil disobedience. Now, as soon as you say the topic is civil disobedience, you're saying our problem is civil disobedience. That is not our problem. Our problem is civil obedience. <laughs> Our problem is the numbers of people all over the world who have obeyed the dictates of the leaders of their government and have gone to war. And millions have been killed because of this obedience. We recognize this for Nazi Germany. We know that the problem there was obedience, that the people obeyed Hitler. People obeyed. 
That was wrong. They should have challenged and they should have resisted. And if we were only there, we would have showed them. Even in Stalin's Russia, we can understand that. People are obedient. All these herd-like people. Remember those bad old days when people were exploited by feudalism? Everything was terrible in the Middle Ages. But now we have Western civilization, the rule of law. The rule of law has regularized and maximized the injustice that existed before the rule of law. It's the international dedication to law and order that binds the leaders of all countries in a comradely bond. That's why we're always so surprised when they get together. They smile, they shake hands, they smoke cigars. They really like one another, no matter what they say. What we are trying to do, I assume, is really to get back to the principles and aims and spirit of the Declaration of Independence. This spirit is resistance to illegitimate authority and to forces that deprive people of their life and liberty and right to pursue happiness. And therefore, under these conditions, it urges the right to alter or abolish their current form of government. And the stress had been on abolish. But to establish the principles of the Declaration of Independence, we're going to need to go outside the law, to stop obeying the laws that demand killing or that allocate wealth the way it's been done, or that put people in jail for petty technical offenses and keep other people out of jail for enormous crimes. My hope is that this kind of spirit will take place not just in this country, but in other countries, because they all need it. People in all countries need the spirit of disobedience to the state, which is, which is not a metaphysical thing, but a thing of force and wealth. And we need a kind of declaration of interdependence among people in all countries of the world who are striving for the same thing. So can we always count on our government to be upfront and honest with society? Sadly enough, we cannot. They have shown time and again that the little people do not matter. If you are seeking help, then you are on your own. It is the elite in society who will benefit the most when times get tough. On August 27th, Major Ed Dames, a former military intelligence officer and a remarkably accurate predictor of future occurrences, held an event in Las Vegas in which he exposed the truth about Planet X. In this event, he referenced that Planet X was real, it is inbound, and it will cause a tribulation. He said it appears to be a planet, but we are not sure exactly what it is. He said it will be seen in the sky by December of 2017 and will appear as big as the moon. It will interact with the magnetic field and weaken it. It will also interact with the sun directly, causing very large solar flares. There will be a 12-foot shift of the Earth, and the core will be heating up due to the interaction of Planet X with the sun. There will be substantial volcanic activity and catastrophic lightning storms. In all, he paints a bleak portrait of what to expect in our very near future. Researchers have mostly been silent on this subject for fear of retribution or of being silenced. But Ed Dames took a risk in revealing what he knows and is aware of with respect to the incoming Planet X. We are increasingly seeing individuals with direct connections to high-ranking intelligence and space agencies who are coming forward to warn the general public about what they know and have heard concerning the presence of an incoming system that will have a major impact on this planet and its inhabitants. Recently, one of our subscribers sent me a video that was published by a Nibiru observer on September the 12th. This video captures one of those rare moments in which a second sun is visible and is so convincing that one has to view this in complete wonderment. Now, if you look carefully at the object to the right of our sun, 
you will notice that it, it is emitting its own light source. It is diamond shaped or could be considered to be in the shape of a cross. I would have to speculate that what is being seen here by this observer is the Sun's Death Star companion Nemesis. Although I have no way of saying with definitive proof that this is what we are seeing in this video. But considering its shape and dimensions and the amount of light emulating from this object, it certainly fits the description of a second sun. As Major Ed Dames had described in his presentation recently, he is grappling with what is coming our way. But whatever it is, it is large, it is threatening, and will have a major impact on our planet. The observer in the previous video, which I just highlighted, mentioned that the second sun was only visible for a short duration. September 2016. And um, I, took, I basically saw a, an object last night in the field. It was big. It had moons or planets around it. Now, it was only there for about five, ten minutes, and then it faded away into the blackness of the chemtrails. His observation is very similar to those of other sky watchers who were privileged to get a short glimpse of this incoming monster. One of those observers noticed while viewing the SOHO website that a planet or star suddenly appeared between Venus and Mercury for a short duration and then disappeared just as suddenly as it had appeared. Notice how the left-right vectors off of Venus and Mercury align with this object and how the coronal discharge is affected. Also note the objects at approximately the 11 o'clock and the 1 o'clock position and how they react with the coming and going of this object. So whatever is present here is having an effect on the other planets in our solar system, which is what I have said all along as to its influence on other planets. The publisher of this video explains that he took 40 screenshots to make this short clip in UTC increments of one minute each. The evidence of an invading system is becoming more prevalent by the day. But I'm not going to try and convince you that this is real. That is not my objective. What lies in wait is in the eyes of the beholder. You either accept this as a condition of our existence on this planet. After all, if you are to believe the Sumerians and the Egyptians, then you are aware that this is not the first time that Planet X has made a passage across our bow. According to historical records, it has happened before and will happen again long after we are gone. Its passage is supposedly a part of the natural cycle of life on this planet and across the universe. All things are created and all things must die. But believe this, we are living in perilous times. You don't have to venture very far from home to realize that we face many dangers, some of them which are man-made, but many of which are the result of cosmic forces which are having a direct impact on this planet and our very way of life. So as I have said before, your best defense is to keep looking to the skies, for therein lies the answers to your mortal and spiritual welfare.